Welcome to Lightyear Frontier. In this video, we're going to be going through the ultimate beginner guide. I'm going to give you guys some tips and tricks to help you out. And starting off, if you sleep, it's going to automatically cook anything that you have in some of your crafting stations. So for an example, if we come in here to my furnace, you're going to see iron bars. And if I start producing six of them, that's going to take a total of 12 minutes. Whereas if we come out of the barn, if I don't <laughs> smash into the wall, if we come over to the uh, cabin, once we have slept, we are going to see that instead of waiting 12 minutes, we go back into the barn and all of the iron bars will have finished producing. You'll see all of them on the floor there. So we've got six and that is now empty. So if there's anything you want to craft as it's reaching nighttime, stick it all in the uh, furnace and stuff and then go to sleep because it will automatically produce when you wake up the next day. And the next tip is to do exactly the same thing as what you do with the crafting, but do it with watering your crops. Because if you water them just before you go to sleep, when you wake up, they're going to have like better growth through the night. And then the next tip is to focus on your mech upgrades as much as you can. If we jump into the upgrade depot, you are going to get lots and lots of helpful stuff here. So for an example, you're going to get extra power to your irrigation hose. You'll get extra power to your spike saw. And it's going to help you make progress in the game. So always, whenever possible, focus on your mech upgrades. Because it's not just going to help out with progress, but it would also help out with farming. It's going to make it a lot more efficient. And then even though I only have one at the moment, the next tip is to make more than one of the crafting buildings. Because if you go into the furnace, you'll see that, for an example, the iron bars, they take two minutes each to craft. And granted, you can go to sleep at night and craft all of them automatically. But if it's the middle of the day, you've got to wait a little bit for the day-night cycle to finish its cycle. And if you have multiple of these buildings, instead of getting one iron bar, every two minutes you're going to get two if you've got five buildings you're going to get five so always make more than one of the crafting buildings for an example out here if i stop smashing into that stupid barn wall if we come over here to the workshop shed that we've got built you'll see that we've got six oil pressers because once we get crops instead of making one oil we're making six at a time and then next up is to make progress through the game and unlock new buildings and crafting resources Sometimes you might just have to simply craft the latest unlock in the chain. So for an example, to unlock the lens, you'll see at the top left, I need three red lenses in order to upgrade my vacuum harvester range. In order to unlock those lenses to be able to craft them, what you need to do is unlock the furnace. And to unlock the furnace, you need to use the grinder to grind stone into stone dust. So the game's not going to tell you anything like that, but it might be something simple like grinding stone into stone dust. That's going to unlock the furnace, and then with the furnace, once you have crafted red glass, you're going to be able to craft red lenses. And then the red lenses come into the assembler, and you'll see at the moment we can do clear, red, and blue. To make sure that you're paying attention to everything and like you're focusing on crafting the newest stuff you can to unlock extra things to make progress in the game. And then if we have a look at the world map, the next thing is to explore. Exploration in this game is going to be your best friend next to farming. You'll see that me and Pete have every single region in the game unlocked besides the top right. And then we're not sure what this place does over here yet. But through exploration, you're going to find a lot of new resources. You're going to make so much progress. So do not neglect the exploration in this game. Then next up is to build these two buildings as quick as you possibly can. So this is the merchant landing and this is the upgrade depot. Because when the merchant comes down, you're going to be able to buy a bunch of new mech parts. So if we go along to the mech parts, you'll see there's engines, there's arms, legs, and there are windshields. When you start the game, you're going to have these like frustrating bars on your like HUD. You're going to be able to see these bars. It's kind of like gets in the way of your view. But if we go into the upgrade depot for $200, which isn't a lot. So like you can basically farm things. You can go and find materials. You can sell them to the vendor, like to the merchant that comes down. Then spend $200, buy the vintage windshield. Because if we have a look here, you'll see it's in the world. So that means I've got it equipped. And the vintage windshield takes away those bars. So you're going to have a clear view of everything. And I believe another couple of windshields do it in the game. But the vintage windshield is one of the first ones you'll come across in the, uh, the little merchant shop. And then all you have to do to equip it is once you have interacted and attached yourself to there, if you just click on the item you want. So for an example, I wanted this Farmec windshield. 
It brings it into the world, and then all you do is use your pickaxe. You grab the uh, windshield off your mech, and then you replace it. Like, you chuck it outside. It's going to disappear. And then you replace it with the one that you've just spawned in. But yeah, I highly recommend getting the vintage windshield because it just makes everything so much clearer. And then next up, when you clear a region, you're either going to have noxious weeds or noxious slime. Sometimes you'll have both. Once you have cleared a region and it's gone to the next day, either through sleeping or letting the day just like let them cycle progress. Once it's done its thing, you're going to clear the region, like completely restore it back to how it was before everything went wrong. And the game is going to show you a cutscene. Do not skip this cutscene because sometimes it's going to show you some of the new materials that are going to be found in that region. But it will also show you roughly whereabouts to find it. So for an example, on the world map, all the way down in the lowland plains, it shows you that you're going to get Fractalite. And then if I remember correctly, I believe it's the uh, Yellow Forest. Once you see that cutscene, it's going to show you that Blue Crystal can be found there. So the cutscenes are really, really important to find in new resources. And next up, when you come across a Ruins, which is exactly what this purple and black stuff is, once you come across one, you are going to have these little beams of light that come up from strange rocks, and those are artifacts. What these are going to do is unlock lore pieces about that specific area. And all of the artifacts are found in a small radius around that specific ruins. So you don't need to go off exploring to find any of the artifacts. They are all close by. But there is an audio cue. It'll be like this buzzing sort of sound when you are close to an artifact. So what I recommend doing is turning the music volume to zero if you are struggling to find the artifact so that you can hear when you are close to one. Then next up is if you have a look at the top left, you're going to see Vacuum Harvester Range 1, Spike Saw Power 3, and Sprint Speed 2. What you can do is if you go into the Upgrade Depot screen, you can actually create missions. So for an example, you'll see here, this is the Vacuum Harvester Range 1. If I wanted to, for an example, I wanted to grab the Irrigation Hose Range 1, then what you can do, if you look at the bottom left, you can press Y to create a mission. What that's going to do is pin the parts that you're going to need, all of the different materials, and that way you'll be able to keep an eye on what you are finding when you're exploring and what you're making in your crafting buildings and stuff. It's going to make it a lot easier to keep track of exactly what you are trying to go for. So always create missions whenever you are looking to do a mech upgrade. And next up is to upgrade your housing when you can, as bigger housing is going to increase the coziness, and then as you place decorations and increase your coziness level, you're going to get extra benefits for the next day. So if you have a look at the top right, you'll see that my coziness is level 2. I've got a bunch of flower beds, I've got torches, I've got flags, a campfire, I've got fencing... And if I enter the small cabin, when you start off with the like basic small tent, you're only going to have keen eye. It gives you a chance to find additional resources in the wild. So basically when you're harvesting, if you go to, for an example, you go to an aluminium rods deposit, you might only get three. Whereas if you have keen eye, you might get five or six. But once you've upgraded from the tent to the small cabin, you're going to also get Animal Friend. And as long as you have your coziness at the max level, you're going to get these effects every time you sleep, and they last quite a long time. And Animal Friend gives you a chance to dig up additional resources when you feed an animal. So for an example, instead of an animal just digging up a polyberry, they might dig up a polyberry and an aluminium rod. And then as you make more progress in the game, you will unlock bigger buildings. You will see if we go to the homesteads, you start off with a small tent we've gone to a small cabin and our next upgrade is going to an actual house and then there are mansions and everything like that so it gets bigger and bigger you're going to get a higher coziness level which is going to give you better effects and then last but definitely not least is if you want resources to respawn faster so for an example if we go to the map quickly if we come down to right around here in the pine heights you're going to get aluminium rods so if you want these to respawn faster, then what you can do is if we go to the barn very quickly, you're going to see this little machine here. It's called a fodder oven. And this is where you craft essentially what the food is for the animals in the game. And then if we leave the barn and we come to behind our housing, you're going to see this spiky statue thing here. This is a nest. So you'll see loads of animals in the area. If you feed this nest three basic fodders, that's going to fill up. And then there are two other nests in the area because you'll see if you go to the world map, it says nests fed zero out of three. And what you have to do is create the fodder for the types of animals that are in the area. Once you've fed the nests, as soon as you go to sleep, it goes to the next day. You're going to get three tiers or three levels 
of like resource restoration. So the more nests you feed in the day, the better your resource production is going to be overnight whilst you're sleeping. So it's really important if you want your resources to respawn back faster to make sure you're feeding the nests. And that is my ultimate beginner guide to some tips and tricks to help you guys out in Lightyear Frontier. And what we're going to do is leave that video there. Let me know your thoughts and stuff about this game in the comments. I will see you guys in the next one. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped you out. Thank you for watching.